back, everybody. My first guest tonight is the junior senator from Pennsylvania. Please welcome back Senator John Fetterman. <laughs> Nice to see you again. The, the, the first time I interviewed you, you were a mayor. Now uh, you're a senator. Every part of your life is public, including your health. Yeah. And, and in May of 2022, you had a stroke. I did, yeah. So first question is, how are you feeling? Well, I was actually on my way to a campaign event. And I was walking into a Sheets. Anyone? Wawa Sheets? You know? Yeah, yeah any, anyone? Anyone? Yeah. And I'm a Sheets guy, you know. But at uh, any rate, I was walking out of a bathroom in Sheets. And my wife, Giselle, was like, oh my God, you're having a stroke. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I feel fine. And, and there was some tail signs that my uh, face was drooping a little bit. And you got to get to the hospital. And I was like, no, I got to get to this event. You know, the primary is like a couple days ago. And they insist that we going to the hospital. And that stroke uh, nearly uh, claimed my life. And, you know, Nearly dying as a major downer, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm so I'm so grateful to be here with you t again. So yeah. Well, happy to have you here too. <laughs> glad you can make it, shall we say? Ex explain to the audience what's the technology we're using right here for this interview. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm so grateful that after the stroke, that I had some lingering processing auditory issues, yeah. and now sometimes I use this captioning. And that is nothing different than having glasses like you have. Yeah. So I absolutely can process everything, but sometimes the language get kind of lost in translation. So I use this when I'm able to interact. And it really made me a fully more empathetic person. And I never thought about captioning before I had the stroke. And now I realize I have to be an advocate for anyone with a disability to have the kind of technology that allows them to fully participate in society. Well, I can see how being more empathetic might make you a better senator and being public about this disability that mm -hmm. you have is, is a good thing, but how does it feel to have your private health become public news? Uh, it's, that's, you signed up for that gig, and that's, that's part of it. And now, you know, the, the, the better I get, the sad, you know, Fox News becomes because they, they, they love every, every. <laughs> uh, every, every word I missed was like candy for Fox News, you know? And now, uh, now they even started thinking that some people now there's a conspiracy that I have a, a body double now, you know? So. Yes. It's, <laughs> this is. Yeah. It's right here. <laughs> it's in Forbes. <laughs> Conspiracy theorists go viral with claims Senator John Fetterman actually body well, double. I, I just, it's now I, I tell the truth. It's like I'm actually the, the, the body double, and John's at home going to be watching this. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> good. So we, All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mental health is, has also become part of the public discourse, Very in much. part because of you. I mean, a lot of politicians over the years have dealt with uh, depression in different forms. Um, Lincoln had his melancholy. Uh, Churchill famously had his black dogs. Thomas Eagleton in 1972 got kicked off the Democratic ticket for being treated for depression. But you're the first one to publicly seek help for your depression and then lean into educating other people about it. What's that been like to discuss this struggle so publicly that is goes to the heart of, of, of how you deal with every day. No, I, it's, it's a privilege and it's a, a duty to talk about this because I want everybody, you know, you have an enormous platform. I, I want anyone who's listening to this that sees this. If you are suffering from depression, please get help. Please get help because it works. It works. Yeah, I get... I... I get, emo I get emotional because um, when you're in the, in the blackness and depression tricks you into thinking that you've lost even though you might have won. 
And, you know, I was a skeptic. I'm like, I'm never going to get better. Like, this is never going to change. And it takes you in a very more dangerous kind of direction. And, and I really want to emphasize anyone that is on that slope, don't ever, ever, ever make the decision to ever harm yourself. And I beg people, please get help. Because... <laughs> Succumbing to that doesn't, it's not weakness. It just means that the, the good news is, is that it works because I was the biggest skeptic ever. Well, speaking of people who need help, the House of Representatives is, yeah. is, oh, is a mean, mess. No, is a, do, do senators feel pretty good right now that they're not the most dysfunctional part of the government? <laughs> well, it's a low bar, you know, I mean, re really. Uh, no, I, I just want everybody to realize just how truly dysfunctional it, it really is. And I always tell people, don't worry. Please don't worry. It's, it's, it's much worse than you think. You know, that. <laughs> truly. Well, um, uh, you, you, changed, you changed what a, a, a political campaign uh, looks like, what it sounds like. Is it easier to do that or to change what the Senate looks and sounds like? Because you're different. <laughs> I not, no, it's, it's, it's just the, the Senate thing. Um, I want, you know, I don't know, maybe have any of you heard of the, a story about the, the dress code? Yes. Yes, yes, I, I we don't, have heard. I don't know. I don't know We've what. heard about yeah. the dress code. Here you are. You're the star of it. <laughs> Senate dishes dress code as Fetterman and others choose casual clothes. Yeah, yes. No, and, <laughs> Yes. And, and I, I, I swear, you know, it's assumed that it was about for me. And of course, I don't know why, I mean, the way I dress, but uh, I never asked for it, you know. And then when I knew that this was going to be announced, I was like, oh boy, here it comes. But, uh, but I was really struck by, you know, oh my God, the world is going to burn because he's going to wear a hoodie on the floor. But uh, I mean, like Ukraine or shutting down the government or, you know, all these issues, I think it's much more important to sees, you know, what will this man wear on the floor of the Senate? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, just in case you want to stay casual and formal at the same time, we got you a tuxedo T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. In case. Yeah. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. It, uh, it, it, so... Oh, I'm very yeah, Exactly. Very it only comes in large, so it might look like a, uh, a onesie on you. Yeah. <laughs> um, is it awkward? to be in the Capitol and then run into people that you have put up a devastating meme about because you've got excellent meme game. But then you have to see these people in the cafeteria. Uh, no, it's... It, <laughs> you all should need to know that America is not sending their best and brightest, you know, to Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes, sometimes you literally just can't believe. Like you know, these people are making the decisions that are you know determining the the government here. It's 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 actually scary too. And you know, before the the government almost shut down. I mean, it came down to a couple hours. I was in my office, and they finally came over from the house, and they're like, okay, well, this has to be unanimous in the Senate. And out of 99 of us, if one single one of us would have said no, the whole government would have shut down. And that's how dangerous that is to put that kind of power in one's hands because you have some very less gifted kinds of people there that are willing to, <laughs> to, to shut down the government just to score points on Fox. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perhaps they have other gifts that they're just hiding from us. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I, I never thought that having a, a, a Speaker of the House would ever be useful in, in kind of things come up. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I never thought that would happen. Yeah. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more Senator John Fetterman, everybody. <laughs> Stick around.